Hey guys, good morning. Glad to be here with you. Just a couple of announcements. Um, due to the coronavirus, we will not meet the rest of April. So with that being said, there's a couple ways that you can connect. We are having a blood drive tomorrow, uh, Monday from 2 to 6. The American Red Cross is going to do it. It's going to be sanitary. They will be practicing social distancing. Um, temperatures will be taken at the door. If you're interested, call 1-800-RED-CROSS to make an appointment. Walk-ins are welcome, though. Also, we are going to have a night of reflection on Good Friday evening. You can join us on the Home Church app at 7 p.m. Um, for prayer and reflection. Thanks. Set me free. I 
What's up? I'm Witt. Uh, I'm the lead pastor here at Home Church. Uh, just want to say thanks uh, for taking some time to hang out with us, to spend some time uh, worshiping with us today, and then just opening up God's Word together. Uh, if we've never met, um, I look forward to the day uh, that we can, uh, but right now, uh, in the midst of this social distancing, and we're just glad that you're here with us, that you're tuned in online. Um, we're going to do something uh, today. We're going to start a new conversation. And the, the, this conversation, uh, it surrounds this idea that, like, we know in the midst of the season that we're in, the times are tough. Uh, and, and when times tend to be tough, that we can take our minds uh, off of what matters most. Uh, and a long time ago, a couple thousand years ago, uh, Paul wrote a letter uh, to the people of Corinthians um, to remind them of what matters most when times are tough. Uh, so let me just read to you real quick to start us. First uh, Corinthians 15, 1 to 6. It says this, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you. If you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me, that Christ died for our sins. Just as the scripture said, he was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve, and after that he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. And in the original language it said, though some have fallen asleep, because when you see somebody defeat death, you're done using the word death. This was good news. This was the reminder of the Corinthians. And I just want to remind you this morning of the good news that we have in Christ, that uh, Jesus um, is the good news. He's the gospel. And, and, and this is what we're going to talk about for the next three weeks, that we're going to just celebrate uh, the fact that Jesus was crushed for our sins. And so we're going to talk about that in our time today. Uh, next week, we'll celebrate Easter together online right here, and we're going to celebrate the fact that Jesus conquered death, that he overcame death for you and I. And then in two weeks, uh, we're going to talk about the fact that this has been confirmed, because in the midst of reading this, I think, okay, he was crucified and he conquered death. Well, I hope someone confirmed this, and it says that those close to him and those um, on the fringes with him, and, the, and 500 saw him and confirmed this good news. So today, we're starting a conversation uh, with, that we got really creative with, that we're just going to call it what it is that this is the good news. Let me pray for us. God, thanks. Uh, thanks for this scripture. In, in this season for us, God, the volume on this scripture gets turned up a little bit. Uh, in the midst of difficult times, in the midst of struggle, um, it would be so easy for us uh, as a church, as a culture, um, to lose track of what matters most, to take our eyes off of you, to forget about the good news. And God, I'm just thanking you this morning um, this, for the scripture that we just read uh, and the good news that we have. Uh, it's through your son. God, I just ask uh, today and in the next few weeks that you bring us peace, you, you restore our hope, 
uh, that you remind us of the good news that we have in you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Well, hey, I would ask you this, like, um, what are you willing to do to come up with a cure? What are you willing to do to come up with a cure? Uh, I know in our house for Amber and I, uh, my wife, uh, we're willing to do whatever it takes to come up with a cure. Uh, most recently, um, well, I guess like in the last eight years, um, my wife and I will do whatever it takes to come up with a cure to get our kids to go to sleep. Uh, we have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old and a new three-year-old. Um, and this, these are just some things that we've done uh, to get our kids to go to sleep. Uh, we've rocked them. Uh, we, we've walked them. We've, we've driven them around uh, Charleston and Matt Toon in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, we've even sang to them. We've bought sound machines, overpriced sound machines for them. Um, we've turned on fans for them. We've, we have, well, one of us have even told them that Santa may be watching them, that we'll do whatever it takes to cure the fact that our kids need to go to sleep. And I think we've all been reminded uh, in the season that we're currently in that most of us are willing to do whatever it takes to come up with a cure for this coronavirus. And it may be um, that your social distancing, um, we've at large decided to social distance, um, and it may come at the cost uh, of our economy. Um, we've sent stimulus checks out, or our government in the process of sending stimulus checks out, that many of us have donated blood, many of us have donated time, many of us have donated um, spend our, our personal spending and our, our finances. Uh, we've sacrificed time, that w we've gone to God to pray about this. Uh, we've put money and time and effort into research to come up with some sort of cure for this virus, that we're willing to do whatever it takes to come up with a cure. And today, uh, I want to talk about the good news, and I want to take time to celebrate um, the cure that God came up with to reconnect us, the, the cure um, th that we desperately needed um, to be reconnected with our Heavenly Father. Um, and here's what we're going to read about today, and he here's what we're going to be uh, reminded of, is that God sent His Son, His one and only Son, who knew no sin, to become sin for us. And that was to be the cure. And, it, and a part of the cure is, is, is his son who knew no sin uh, would be crushed. And his son uh, who knew no sin would be crucified for us. And so I'm going to pick up the story of, of Jesus' crucifixion in Mark Chapters 15, verses 33 to 39 is what I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. Uh, and we're just going to look into uh, the crushing and the crucifixion of Jesus uh, this morning. And I, I just, before I get into the passage, I want to give you a little context of the crucifixion of Jesus. It's already started um, and, and this is what it's looked like up to this point that Roman soldiers have arrested him. That, that they've mocked him, that they, they crowned him with thorns, and they, they mocked him like he was a king, and they put him in a robe, and, and this crown that they gave him went straight into his head um, as it was thorns, um, and they taunted him, and they spit on him, and they struck him. And in the process, um, they had him take off his robe uh, to mock him as a king, and they had him put back on his clothes, and then they had him carry his cross that he would be killed and crushed on. I did a little research this week that this cross that they would have had him carry was uh, six feet wide by 24 feet in length. And they had him carry it, which most would say was a quarter of a mile to a half a mile um, to the hill that he'd be crucified on. And once he carried his cross, they nailed him to it. 
and they hung him to it. They verbally abused him. They said things like, look at you now, and if you're the son of God, and if, if you're the king, why don't you save yourself? And what was happening was they weren't just crushing uh, Jesus. They were, they were crucifying him. And, and the cure for us was the fact that Jesus would be killed for us. And so I'm going to pick it up uh, in Mark chapter 15, verse 33. It says this. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Verse 34 says, then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lima, Sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And I got to be honest, like, when Jesus makes that statement, as like a guy that's just like trying to be a good dad, um, I'm kind of wondering, like, wouldn't a good father um, show up at this point? Like, I, I think of myself as like someone that's trying to be a good dad, and, and my thought goes to like, if you mess with my kid, like, I, I'm calling, like, we're, we're, it's time to stop the fight, that I'm God, I'm playing the dad card, I'm playing the I'm in charge card, and, and the question is, is, God, where are you at in this, and, and why aren't you doing something about this? But here's what I've come to realize uh, just this week is, is, God came to get um, all of his kids back. God came um, to reconnect uh, with all of us. Um, and so the cure was to be Jesus in the midst of this crushing. Um, and, and so what, what I know uh, is your heavenly father is a perfect father. And, and this was not the time for him to play favorites. But he showed up and he sent his son to show up for our behalf so he could be, so we could be reconnected. And verse 35 says, Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. And verse 36 says, One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said. Let's see whether Elijah comes down to take him down. Verse 37 says, Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And not to go crazy deep on you here, but, but to to share some good news um, in this story, uh, that when the temple was torn, it was this representation of, of God um, tearing apart what, it's a symbolism of God tearing apart what separates God and man. And it was tore from the top down for us to be reminded that God ended the gap, that God took away the distance between he and, and us in the midst of this. In verse 39, watch this. It says, When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, soldiers who were a part of the crucifixion, he exclaimed this, This man truly was the Son of God. This is... What I know is the truth of Jesus, uh, it came out in the midst of his crushing. Um, and this is what I know for us, um, that his crushing, that the crushing of Jesus was our cure. And you're thinking like, wow, this is good news. And I would just remind you of this in the midst of that story and the fact that 
Jesus' crushing was the cure to us that we have victory in the violence. We have victory in what we just read, that we've been set free, that we've been, we've been paid for, that there, there's a part of us um, that thinks like maybe we, we messed up yesterday, that we need to be perfect. I, I would just like slow your roll in the fact that like, I, I don't know about you, but I, I've never been through a pandemic. And my behavior at different points this week and, and in the past, it's fallen short. And we have grace and we can be able to let go of some of uh, the guilt that we're carrying because we have victory through this violence. That this was like game over, price paid, that we win. It's a little bit like if we're trying to add to the story ourselves, it would be like um, if... if you're on a baseball team, and it's the bottom of the ninth, and your team's up four to two, and you decide you still need to bat when everyone else knows the game is over. For us, there is like victory in the violence. That This is like end of the story, drop the mic, that Jesus had paid it all, that God had given us a cure, that he had reconnected us through the crushing of his son. And I will just remind you of this in Mark 10, 45. It says this, that for even the son of man, came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. I don't know if you know this, but the word ransom, um, it's a payment to set a prisoner free. And for you and I, there's victory in the violence. There, there's victory in the fact that Jesus paid our ransom through the crushing, through the crucifixion. We were cured that there's victory in the violence of all that, that we have been, we were once a prisoner and through his payment, we have been set free. In John 19, 30, uh, Jesus is, is on the cross and, and he says, it is finished. He actually said the word tetelestai, which means it is finished, which means that it has been paid in Full, which for you and I means there has been victory in the violence. That I would tell you this. Um, we, we have a hope. We have a hope right now. Like even when it hurts, that the truth, it does not take away the temporary pain that some of us are feeling. That it may be your business. It may be a family member that's sick. It may be a family member that's just at risk. It may be the short-term temporary um, depression that you're feeling because of the social distancing. It may be anxiety. Um, it, whatever it would be, that the truth, it doesn't. It doesn't take away the temporary pain. But, but we have this hope that will outlast the, the temporary and the current hurt that we're under. Romans 8, 18, it says, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal in us later. That we have a hope in the midst of the hurt we're currently going through. I've also come to learn this, that, that uh, the truth comes out when something's being crushed, that the truth just comes out when someone or something is being crushed. Uh, so we've had like a little bit more time on our hands lately uh, at home. Um, most of you probably have. Uh, so my son, Mason, who's eight, uh, he and I have been playing a little bit more Xbox and and specifically uh, this game called NBA 2K, in which we've been playing a lot of basketball. Um, and I don't know if it was the stress of this, this season, uh, but the other night um, I got blown out by an eight-year-old on a basketball game on Xbox. And I got crushed. And I don't know if it was the stress of the season, but, but I would say I tossed the controller 
Um, if Amber was sitting next to me, she would probably tell you that I threw the controller. Um, and, and when the controller hit the couch, um, it was like the back of the controller exploded in the, and, and the batteries flew everywhere. And it was in that moment that like my three-year-old daughter and my six-year-old daughter and my eight-year-old son and, and, and my wife, I was about to tell you her age, but I decided not to, uh, realized like, wow, the truth just came out in the crushing. And for us right now, like, if you're following Jesus, like, we're being squeezed. And, like, I would just ask you, like, what do people see around you? Because I, I, I just know this, that the truth comes out when we're being crushed. And, and I know um, where I want my heart to align um, was right where Jesus' heart aligned in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed like the most human um, prayer, the most human words that we, we really hear Jesus say that, that he says in Matthew 26, I think it's 38 and 39, he says, Father, if you're willing, would you take this cup from me? He's like, I don't want to be crushed. I, don't li- I want this pain to go away. I want this temporary hurt to go away. And for you and I, we, we so easily pray, yeah, God, take it away. But here's what I want the courage to be able to say. Is, as Jesus says to his heavenly Father, he says, even if you don't, that I will. And for us right now, like, I want to have a heart, I want to have a spirit, like in the midst of the crushing that the truth of Jesus comes out, that I want to say, that I, I, I've come to learn this, that, that fear in this season would say, what if, what if, and what if this happens, what if that takes place, and what if we can't pay a bill, what if we get sick, and what if something happens to our family member, and we ask and wonder the what if, and that's what fear asks every time, but faith would say in the midst of this season, even if, even if, even in the midst of this squeeze, I want people to see Jesus, that I would just remind you that the truth comes out when we're being crushed. And then I would just ask you this, like if you're like maybe not following Jesus and you're just sitting in the room and someone's jacked your TV and or someone's saying, hey, just watch this with me or, or, or whatever it would be, like you're just not to the point of saying like, hey, I'm, I'm in on this or I'm, I'm going to confess Jesus as my Savior. I would just ask you like, Would you consider, would you consider confessing Jesus as your Savior? And your answer, your response may be like, no, no, I'm so far from God. Or like my response at one time was like, when I get things cleaned up a little bit, because like I will consider it, but I'm going to have to stop doing Um, what I did Friday night or I'm going to have to stop looking at this website right now or I'm going to have to stop hanging out with these people right now and and let me clean myself up a little bit. Um, I would just remind you from the story that we just read that you may feel like, oh, I'm so far from God or I'm not good enough that what I love about verse 39 in the, in the scripture that we just read is it says, the Roman officer who stood facing him, who was a part of killing him, he exclaimed, this man truly was the son of God. And as soon as they killed him, they confessed him. And you may think, oh, I'm far from God. You didn't kill Jesus. He did pay the price for your sin. And in the moment after the Roman soldiers are saying, uh, yeah, we killed him, but we just confessed him. You may still think, I don't know if this is true, or I don't know where I stand in the midst of this. Um, And that's okay. You should come back next week because I'll just like, 
tell you next week, um, a spoiler alert, that we're going to celebrate Easter um, and Jesus conquers death. That this story is not the last we've heard or seen of Jesus. That he comes back after he was put in a grave. So I would just ask you, like in this moment, in this season, would you just consider confessing Jesus as your Savior? Romans Romans 10, 9, it says this. If, if, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's as simple as just saying, Jesus, I receive your gift of salvation. I put my belief, I put my trust in you that changes your eternity. It gives you a hope in the midst of the hurt. It gives you a promise to hold on to in the midst of the problems that we're currently in that would you just consider confessing Jesus? This is what I know. Like, what's true of God, this is what I know um, is the good news for us that Jesus, he was crushed and we were cured. He was crushed, and we were cured. This is the good news, that Jesus was crucified for us. I just want to take some time this morning. This is going to look a little bit different, but uh, I just want to close um, with communion. So if you're a follower of Jesus, I would encourage you to get in your cabinets, to have your stuff ready, uh, to just grab some sort of juice to grab um, some bread um, and again if you're you're watching and thinking what is happening now that what we're doing here is just remembering what Jesus did for us in the cross and through the cross that that the bread that we're about to eat um, is just this reminder is this symbolism of Jesus's body that was broken uh, for my behalf and, and the juice uh, that we're about to drink it's this representation of Jesus' blood that was shed for our behalf. So I would just encourage you this morning as a follower of Jesus to take some time to gather the people in your house and just reflect on what Jesus has done for us. Reflect on the good news that we have, that Jesus has been cured. We've been cured through the crushing of Jesus. This is the good news. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for sending a cure. We thank you for for reconnecting us. We we, we thank you for this new uh, opportunity that you've given us. We thank you for the fact that you've paid for every um, sin we've committed. We thank you for the fact that you gave your one and only so you could get your whole family back, that you could reconnect with us. God, I just ask um, this morning that you give us a peace, that you, you remind us of what you've done for us, that we, we um, in this season can just celebrate uh, the, the hope that we have that's beyond any of these temporary problems that we're currently facing. And God, I thank you. I thank you personally for my salvation and what you've done for me. And I, God, I ask this morning that you um, give us as followers of Jesus uh, the courage to point people to you in the midst of this season that feels like we're getting squeezed, we're getting crushed, we're stressed out, that when the truth comes out in our lives in this season, God, that it would look like you, that people would see you in this. But above all of that, God, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the hope that we have. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Oh uh-huh.
Beside you, all around you, and within. 